Hey everybody, welcome back to Hardworking Man. This is just going to be a quick video. I got a couple new products here I'm going to unbox and show you guys what I use. It's the one month review on my remote location roadside stand. It's the one that I got permission to put the stand there by trading lawn mowing work for it. If you don't have a good spot to put a roadside stand, work a deal out with somebody, a friend. Maybe their kid wants to make money. Maybe they need you to do them a favor. Maybe trade them some firewood for it. There's a lot of different options, but like Tony from Tony's Cool Tools, cool tools will say, location, 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 and I can tell you that's 100% accurate. If you have a good location, you're going to sell product. If you have a quality product at a fair price, you're going to keep selling product. I put the bundle stand at my brother's cottage. That one has done much worse than I expected, and the main reason for that, I believe, is gas prices. A lot of people that own properties on the cottage, my brother does, come from Chicago, and he said this year he's had the lake to himself. Even Memorial Day weekend, it was empty, a ghost town there, he said. The people just aren't coming. Gas is six, close to seven bucks a gallon in Chicago, I believe, and people are staying home. I've only sold a few bundles out of that stand. My brother appreciate it, appreciates it because he's burning some of the bundles up, but I haven't sold very many there. Now on the opposite of that, the roadside stand that I put up in the first month, I sold 26 of the $20 racks. I sold 13 bundles. 8% of my total sales from that rack were Venmo payment. The rest was cash. I thought the Venmo would be a little bit higher there than it was, but even if it was 8% more sales, I'll take it. It doesn't cost me much, a couple cents per transaction to have the business account. I had a 2% theft rate. I had a couple bundles go missing and a few few people that bought a rack help themselves to a little more than a one rack so unfortunately that happens out there you gotta account for it that's not too terrible of a rate I also had one face cord delivery that was generated off the sign somebody saw the sign there which I have down here with my contact information on it if you want a delivery or larger quantities get a hold of me and they did and I sold the face cord so that racks done amazing very happy with it most people say the first month or two, their racks are pretty slow. If that's a slow month for that rack, that thing's going to be on fire, and I'm definitely going to have to extend it. I'm already thinking of adding a few $10 slots, smaller slots for loose wood, so people can pick those up for $10. So I'll have the 20, the 10, and the bundles. I'm also working on some smoker wood options that I'll put out there. So I'm going to have sticks, I'm going to have chunks, and I'm going to have chips. I've been working on a plan how to make smoker chips, and I waited too long to drop it. J uh, Joe from Ohio Woodburner just dropped it the other day. Very similar to my plan. Mine's a little bit different. I'm still going to roll it out because I'm still planning on doing it, and I'm going to take a few ideas from him, and maybe he'll steal an idea or two from me, but I'm going to get all that stuff going. I got a new tool that's going to help with the chunks, and it's also going to help with firewood. I'm going to bring that to you guys here in another couple videos. Right now, I'm just going to show you a few things. First thing, for my cash box at the roadside stands, I just use this ADIR office. It's called a large key box. And this came off Amazon. I think they're about 30, 35 bucks a piece. It's a pretty solid quality box. I mean, with any box, if you have somebody that wants to rob you, they're going to rob you. But it comes with two sets of keys. I fasten it in, I put washers, and then I put large lag bolts through, so they're going to have to smash the box to get it. I haven't had any issues with that right now, but you always got to concern yourself with theft, but this is a nice quality box. The money stays dry. It's got a big slot in the top to put the cash in, and I've been happy with it so far. Now, regarding theft, that's what I have in here, something to help out with that. This came from Cabela's. I'm a huge hunter. I love hunting. I love doing habitat work and doing all of that. I've gone through a lot of trail cameras throughout the years. One really nice thing that's happened over the last few years is the improvement and availability of affordable but high quality cellular trail cameras. And that's what I have here. I've tried I've tried Cuddy Link, Cuddy Back. I've tried Exodus, which makes a great camera, but it's not cheap. I've tried some of the cheaper ones, the Spy Point, a few different models. I have friends that have tried them. These Tacticam Reveal XB. It's a blackout flash. These cameras are about $150.
they work great they're easy to set up and I the plan I have is the intermediate plan I believe it's eight dollars per camera per month and you get 500 pictures now if you have two cameras it's sixteen dollars but you get a thousand pictures you could have 800 off this camera and 200 off the other it's not 500 per camera it's a total number there's also an overage or you can do an unlimited plan where you can get as many pictures as you want. I believe that's $13 a month, so it's not that expensive. I know when someone's at my wood rack, I'll throw pictures up here. You can see a car pulling in, that's actually me. But another thing this helps with with a remote location is inventory. I can see when that rack's empty, I'll put that picture up too. So you know when you gotta go fill your rack, you know when you should have cash in there. So say you sell three or four racks, you want to go pull that cash out. You don't want to leave $80, $100 in there. And you're going to have to go refill. So these cell cams are great for that. And I really like this one. Now with that, I run the Energizer Lithium batteries. That takes 12 AA batteries. They're $25 for an eight pack right now. So that's what about $32, $33 worth of batteries. And they last quite a while, depending on the number of pictures you're getting. But you can also get these reveal solar panels they come with a lithium battery pack inside it's also solar they're 70 dollars. so the price of replacing your battery is about twice you can have this that has a lithium battery pack that charges up the solar panel that'll charge the pack and run the camera and i've ran cameras for a year straight having this solar panel with the energizer lithium batteries in it so another good thing to look at i got both of these from cabela's when you get closer to hunting season, this stuff's going to be hard to find. They sell out. People will be upselling them on eBay. I have seen the regular Exodus reveal when they first came out. You could buy them for $99 and people were selling them for close to 300 bucks on eBay. Because once they're gone, especially with everything going on in the world, it can be hard to get more, hard to get parts, computer chips, whatever it may be. But if you get those cameras, you put in the recommended cards, you get them set up. They work great and their customer service is great. One last thing I got here, this is just a all purpose tool that I know a lot of people struggle finding a good one of. And I have one, a pair that I found that I really like. So I ordered a couple extra and then I ordered another version of it. I'm really gonna want them in the summer. I think the new version should be a little bit cooler. And with the new tool that I purchased that I'm gonna be breaking out here in a couple days, I think I'm gonna want them. These were just from Home Depot. And they messed my order up. These are the Milwaukee cut resistant gloves. It's supposed to have three pairs of the leather gloves and one pair of, I guess like a athletic type pair, a knit pair that I thought would be cooler. I'm gonna have to look at my slip on this, see if they're shipping those separate or what's going on. These gloves aren't very comfortable when you first start wearing them with this impact strips on them and they have a liner inside, a Kevlar anti-cut liner. But once you get these things broken, they're amazingly comfortable. And the pair that I have now that I thought I lost and found again, I've had for probably six, seven months and used them a lot and they're still in good condition. I, the regular Milwaukee leather gloves, unlined, no impact protection, very similar. They're comfortable, they don't seem to last as long. And it's the same material, so I don't know if this liner helps them last longer. They're a goat skin glove. Once they get broken, they're really comfortable. Keep your hands safe when you hit them on logs. Got a little bit of cut resistance to them for chainsaws and for the new tool I'll be breaking out. A um, little disappointed that I didn't get my full order there. I'm going to have to contact Home Depot and see what's going on and see if I can't get that other pair. But these are on sale, I believe, for 20 bucks a piece I paid for them. And for a good quality glove that's going to last, I say it's worth it. So... Hey, get out there, have fun. Enjoy the holiday weekend this weekend. It's the fourth, my family's gone to my brother's cottage. I'm here working, taking care of the dogs, trying to get some stuff done. I messed up my back a little bit the other day, so I gotta take it easy, no heavy lifting till that heals up. But I'll be able to keep the stand stocked. Just thought I'd bring you a couple products I use here. An update on that first month of the remote location roadside stand. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Have a great day. All right, well, I logged into my Home Depot app and I checked and I did order three pairs of those gloves and one pair of these. For whatever reason, they shipped them separately. I got that order yesterday. 
It said the other order was delivered July 2nd. So I ran out front and they were sitting on the front porch. So this is the other pair. I have not used these yet. I just wanted to try them out. I think they'll be cooler than the leather ones. And if they do end up being similar to the leather, but cooler, I'm going to order some of these for running in the summer. And it's just the uh, cloth. I thought it had the impact resistant, which it doesn't. And it also does not have the cut resistance, which I thought they did when I ordered them. So I'll try these out anyways. They're not what I expected. I'll just use these for, you know, hauling wood, loading the wood rack. I won't use them when I'm running the saw or any of that because they're not the cut resistant. I'm a little bit disappointed. According to the website, I thought they were, but it's probably my mistake. I didn't read enough of the details. So this is the other pair that I just got. Those goat skins with the impact and cut resistant. I really like them. They make a level five cut resistance too. That's black. I tried to get a pair of those, but they were sold out. So hopefully I'll be able to try those one day too, but the Milwaukee gloves, a lot of the Milwaukee stuff, I'm not sponsored by anybody, let alone Milwaukee, but I like their stuff. And if I find something that works good that I like, I'll let you guys know because I appreciate it when other people help me out so I don't have to buy stuff that is no good or that's subpar. So thanks for tuning in to Hardworking Man. If you guys like what you see, subscribe, hit the bell icon, drop the comments. I'll reply to your comments. If you got any you know, tips, anything like that, just, just want to chat, ask a question, say good job. Anything you got, just drop it in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great weekend.